In the 18th century, brides with connections to the royal family and aristocracy were presented at court after their marriage. Special court dress worn with wide side hoops was required for this important occasion. Although we do not know the name of the woman who wore this court dress, the donor's family associated with the bride. And you can see it, it really is a beautiful, elegant dress and perfect for a wedding. In the 19th century, wedding gowns were not only worn for weddings, but were usually worn afterwards for other occasions as well. For a church wedding, sleeves were required. So this particular dress has removable sleeves so that the bride could have short sleeves on another day and use the dress again. This wedding dress was worn in 1841, and you'll notice that it has a color and a pattern. Women with less money often wore colored wedding dresses, which were more practical than white. The pattern on the fabric is up to date, but the cut of the dress follows the silhouette of the mid to late 1830s, reflecting the slower pace of changing fashion in the rural communities. Bridal styles in the 19th century followed fashion. The cut and decorative details of Margaret Scott Lane's 1857 wedding dress are typical of their date. Notice the beautiful fringe along here. It adds so much class and distinction to this wedding gown. This beautiful wedding dress from 1874 was worn by a Quaker. Quakers in Britain varied in their approach to dress. In general, they favored mainstream styles. They wanted to appear well-dressed without standing out. Lucretia Crouch took this approach when she married Benjamin Seabalm at the Friends Meeting House in Clevedon in 1874. Her husband was a bank manager and a widower with a young daughter. Notice the beautiful lace on the front and the bottom. It's made with silk gauze and machine-made lace and silk satin. Artificial pearls were a newly fashionable trimming for wedding gowns in the late 1800s. Charles Frederick Worth was Paris's leading dressmaker at this time period. His international clientele included wealthy Americans like Clara Matthews, who chose this dress when she married at St. George's Hanover Square in England in 1880. This dress also came with a separate train, not displayed here, which brides began to wear in the mid-1870s. Although this dress does have a train itself, but a separate train could have made it even more glamorous. Harriet Joyce worked as a lady's maid before marrying Percy Sams. They wed on the 8th of June, 1899 at St. Andrew's Church in Earlsfield, England. She was an accomplished needlewoman and made her own wedding dress. And it's very interesting to note that the bride chose to wear purple because she was 35 years old and she considered herself too old to wear white. The dress is made from corded silk, silk satin, and machine-made lace. 